Well, here you are. Y'all ready to get your yard work done? Shredder's all set up. Everything's plugged in. And you get ready. And you hit the button. And you get a pulse. Or worse yet, you get nothing. Great. Shredder doesn't work. What's going on? Well, sit back and grab that beer or soda. There are three possibilities why this thing didn't start on you. A couple of them are real easy to fix. One's going to require some additional work. But we're going to get into all of them. I'm going to show you what the possibilities are and how to fix them. So sit back, get that cool and ready, and let's have at it. Now, before proceeding any further, the first thing you want to do is check your drop cord. Go ahead, find something else to plug into it, and make sure the drop cord's still good. You might want to wiggle it around a little bit just to make sure it's not got a broke wire in somewhere or a disconnected terminal. The last thing you want to do is spend a couple hours troubleshooting the Sun Joe and find out that it was the drop cord all along. Next thing on our list of things to check is to make sure that an overload switch isn't tripped. Go ahead and press it. Make sure it doesn't reset. You might want to go ahead and take an ohmmeter and measure across the reset switch and make sure that it's got good continuity across it. For those of you not acquainted with this switch, it's the one on the left as we're looking at it in this portion of the video. The switch makes from top to bottom, it breaks both the hot and the neutral side. I've already taken an ohmmeter and I've connected the ohmmeter up to the top and the bottom of the switch and played with the switch a couple times and noticed that I wasn't getting continuity at all times. Sometimes it would make, sometimes it wouldn't. The other thing I noted was a little dust cover on the switch was just full of real fine sand and some potential leaf clippings. Obviously debris had been getting into the switch and found its way all the way through the switch and out in the little dust cover. Hmm, makes me kind of suspicious here. Okay, next project is to go ahead and take the switch out. The switch they chose to use obviously is rectangular. It has little spring tabs on the bottom and the top. Of course, you just push them in on the top and release it. On the bottom requires a little tool. In this case, I use a mechanics pick to pull up on a little spring clip. Then if you pull up on both sides while you're pushing out on the switch, eventually the switch is going to go ahead and pop right out. Take your time and keep your patience and just apply a little steady outward pressure as you're pulling up from the bottom. Again, you may have to do this multiple times on both sides, but eventually that switch will pop right out. As you can see here, after I got my switched out, I started tapping it on the tile floor and a whole lot of really fine dust started coming out of the switch. Basically, this was the dust that had managed to get its way around the filter and found its way inside the switch. After pulling off the little dust cover, I blew the switch out from both the little holes in the side of it as well as from the front of the switch. And a little bit more trash came out. And then after that, got ready to put the switch back in. While I was disconnecting connectors, I happened to notice that several of them are pretty loose. This can definitely cause a problem with intermediate continuity. In fairly high current situations, like as in this little shredder, sometimes you get a minor burn mark if the connector is not making good continuity. That way you get a little insulating place right in the connector where it won't make full contact. The best way to fix this, of course, take a pair of needle nose pliers and slightly pinch in going from left to right. Just try to curl in to make it good and tight. I've already made one video about replacing the carbon brushes on this unit. It goes through them fairly quickly. As a matter of fact, this one right now is on its third set. This clip here is from that first video. You'll note the brushes are heavily worn. I had to replace the brushes and figure out a new design for holding the little brushes in place. I didn't have a crimp like this one uses, so I had to solder them. My redesigned brush retainers worked pretty well through about two sets of brushes, but I slowly started to think that maybe this was part of the problem I was seeing with this one. Time to redesign the little retainer again. This clip shows my new brush holder retainer clip installed. You note that I used the screw that holds the slide for holding the brushes. This photo shows the stock screw and the longer screw I decided to replace it with. I went with a longer screw because now the screw holds the retainer in place and obviously it's under spring tension. And here's a photo of the replacement screw and my new retainer design. This is a quick shot of the retainer flipped 180 degrees and outside of the actual slide itself. And a vertical shot of the retainer installed and correctly in place. This little short clip shows how best I found to install this new retainer. 
the large screwdriver holds the spring down and in place and the Phillips head just tightens up the long screw making sure it goes all the way down smoothly. This way you keep an even tension across the entire face of the spring retainer. And now for the money shot. Did all this work and modifications work? You betcha. Starts right up. Even sounds stronger. So I'm real happy with this repair. Hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you check back often. I've got lots more to come. Take care, y'all. Have a great day.